Less than 50 miles southeast of Austin, Texas, lies the quaint town of Smithville, a farming and agricultural community with a population of less than 4,000, known more for its contributions to the antique industry rather than the entertainment industry. This is where the story of the man known to the world as DJ Screw begins. Robert Earl Davis Jr. was born on July 20th, 1971, the son of Robert Earl Davis Sr. and Ida Mae Deary. Robert's family members recall life in Smithville. Okay, we bought his first turntable from Western Auto Store for him. That's, he was uh, 10 years old. That's all he wanted was a turntable and some record. Each week, Screw would go out and buy him a record. Whenever you want to find Screw, go in his room. He on the turntable. I seen all the records he had. I like. I looked at his records. I looked at my records. Hey, like, man, we need to we need to come together and do some stuff. The two young DJs formed a friendship and a business relationship that would mark the beginning of both young men's careers. This is not a dance in town. You know what I'm saying? By a long side, this ain't like. You know what I'm saying, New York or Miami or something where it's more quick pace. It's like everything is slow and low down here. Yeah, you, know? you could hear everything, you know what I'm saying? The clarity of it was good. Then on top of that, you know, every track he, you know, he, you know, he, he, he doing something different. The opportunity to freestyle on the hottest mixtapes on the streets had hustlers and aspiring MCs from all over the South Side rushing to Screw's house for a chance to rep his hood. And as they say, the cream began to rise to the top. See, the thing about Screwed Up Click, though, man, it's a lot of members. It's kind of like some Wu-Tang type shit. You know what I mean? From Jump, DJ Screw the General, you know what I'm saying? He was there, you know, he's number one or whatever. Screw had that quality to well. When he come around, you're going to be cool with your beef until he leave. That's how much respect we all had for that dude. He was like the magnet. Drawing all us to him. Gotta have this we this boy serious, man. Put the great tape. Man. Yeah, you put out fraud with, if you got to put out any other tape. I'm telling you. <laughs> Almost overnight, Screw's mixtapes grew from a neighborhood phenomenon to a regional craze. We have to establish order, which is where this gate comes in. If he was like, okay, you know what? From now on, we're gonna sell tapes at a certain time, eight o'clock. 8 o'clock, the gate will open. We sell all the tapes we need to sell. By 10 o'clock, we can close the gate. 5 o'clock, 5 p.m., the line would already be long two or three streets down. That's why the feds and stuff thought he was selling drugs. Screw will sell a thousand tapes in 15 minutes, dog. I mean, back then, Screw Tapes was really like a promotional team with our legs that was able to make it where legs couldn't go. Dang, we wouldn't really worried about what was going on in the rest of the world. And when we did hear the rest of the world, it's because it uh, DJ Screw was putting us up on it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Because we really wasn't uh, checking for nobody unless it was on the screw tape. Dying. Pretty soon, an appearance on a screw tape was better than radio. It's, it's that crazy underground buzz that, you know, only, uh, you know, pioneers from the street can create. So, you know, he had something that was, that, that separated him apart from everybody. Yeah, you know, Screw, he invented the whole movement, you know what I'm saying? And when I, you know, I slowed down my stuff, man, you know, I got the basis of how I do my stuff from listening to the art and how Screw did his thing, you know what I'm saying? I truly believe that constantly talking about the drink, constantly talking about the weed, constantly talking about the pills on the media side, really sheds a bad light on who these guys really are because they are some of the most talented people I've ever met. It was a fad, man. It was right there. It was during the time when the screw thing was popping off. It was new to a lot of us. So this is what we were doing. It was just something we was doing, man. See, that's what happened when people from the outside try and come in the inside talking about shit that they really don't know, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't all that, man. We was... Screw music was screw music, and that was it. Drugs, no drugs. If you love screw music, you love screw music. I can't really speak for nobody else, but I mean, I've been in screw house many a night, many a day, where we didn't have no drink, where we didn't have no weed. We didn't even have cigarettes. And we made some of the dopest freestyles in our whole career. You know, I still listen to screw tapes now, man, and the screw and Pat tripping and laughing and, a bond was like 
Batman and Robin kind. They had coming through, draped, I drip, down, riding 95, hill dog, watch the clear sign with the fox, riding on the blade. Sasha Shades was the syrup and the lemonade. Players Paul Lane, you call me the kid, because I'm coming through and the rap like the Th That was just a great, tremendous amount of respect for each other, each other's space. Um, there's a lot of respect for each other's craft. Everybody wanted to hear Fat Pat and Kiki float, you know what I mean? So he, he felt like he, he knew he was going to make an impact. Things are crazy in this life. Gotta get my smoke on. It's getting hard to hold on. Man, I, I'll never forget this, man, because I looked at my watch, man, and my watch just had stopped. It's just fucked up, you know what I'm saying? It was a legendary guy, you know what I'm saying, putting it down, and it's just... It's fucked up. It was just a fucked up day for the city. So it just... there, you you couldn't say nothing bad about him. Like he was just a really, really, really cool dude. Screw built his own industry, man. For real, man. I mean, his his whole thing was to let us get on the tapes and give us a boost. On the morning of November sixteenth, two thousand, DJ Screw was found dead of an apparent heart attack. It was raining real hard that day. When I gets back into the plane, my plan says I got a phone call waiting. And uh, a friend of mine had called me and asked me, man, you know, have you heard that your brother passed away? I said, I said, nah. I said, man, you know, don't, don't call, don't call me playing like that. I remember the day I got the call, which to this day still gives me chills. Some shit you just can't believe, you know what I'm saying? It, Unbelievable, man. I had to just see it for myself. And it was crazy. I didn't like what I heard on some of the regards and views and so forth. It was portraying him as just a big drug user. And, you know, somebody gets shot, they don't say this father, this good man got shot. They don't say a rapper got shot. You know I expected that because I know they don't understand the music, they don't understand the culture. They don't understand what we're doing. They would have did that with any rapper, man. You know what I'm saying? My, my partner didn't overdose. He worked himself to his demise. He didn't let the fame go to his head or nothing like that. He was just screw. Well, he was a blessing, you know what I'm saying? Everybody don't get to come across people like that. Sure, I mean, if y'all don't know he was a loving son by now, if y'all don't know that he was a, a workaholic, if y'all don't know that this dude was an angel because he made it possible for a lot of people to eat, Y'all don't know that he was the artist. He was an artist. He was like a Picasso. And um, he just, he just, he's just missed, man, because of the, just the type of person he was. I don't miss him for scratching on the turntables and all that. I miss him for sitting down with screw, chopping it up. We laughing and giggling and. You know, this screw. You know, I'm trying to take it where screw left off at, man, to, to push it farther than where it's been at, man. You know what I'm saying? Because just because the man is gone don't mean that the art form should die. Boss hogging entertainment. What? Big Denise entertainment. Huh. EAG and Slim Thug. Feel it, man. Feel it, man. Make way for EAG, my 20s. Rolling. De Niro entertainment. Boss hogging. Patting a piece, Cardinese. We riding in. Catches at the bar, sipping crazy. We get birds and sip syrup and drive. Represent both sides of Houston.